All right, welcome back. And it's time to take a look at some artworks this morning. And for our art display, we have a hyper-realist artist who uses paper and different grades of charcoal to make her art. Atinuke, popularly known as CC Painter, is here with us. It's great to have you. You're welcome, Atinuke. Good morning. CC Painter. <laughs> well, I, like, I, like, I like the sobriquet, by the way. But um, what is hyper-realism? Let's, let's start with that, because maybe some people might need to understand what that okay, term first, really means. Okay, um, first, before hyper-realism, there's realism. Okay, okay. Okay, realism is um, um, me trying to portray someone on paper just exactly how the picture comes. Mm. Now, hyper-realism is going a step further to draw your paws, the every O's on your face and so everything. it's more detailed than more realism, detailed. Yes. right? Yes. Okay, and then how did you get into this particular, it seems it's, it's your favorite style of art yeah. here. Why did you decide to go, to, to, to go into hyper-realism? I'm just um, intrigued by how well detailed it is. Like, okay. it takes a lot of patience, it a does. lot of mental, like, you have to be there. So right? people, I've seen a lot, we've seen a lot of hyper-realistic drawings and both think that they are photographs. You know, yeah. at times it's even hard to differentiate because yes. they are so... Well, do you think that can cause a problem to really knowing which one is art? Because we've seen some people who, who would, you know, at times it's hard to differentiate. I've seen yeah. some that, you know, like maybe my see tears falling down and it looks yeah. like you just, you know... Does that cause a problem at times? It always does. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes when I'm true with my drawings, I put them side by side with the picture mm. and then I tell people to tell me which is the art and which is the picture mm. and a lot of people can't. Mm. All right. So now th these ones you have here now, they are in black and white. Yeah? Yes. But okay, so these are the hyper realistic realist image in black and white, but you could also do them in color. Why do you I prefer can. you focus more it's like you focus more on charcoal, black yes. and white. Yes. Why so? Uh, because color is a bit messy for me. Okay. Um, um, I'm kind of bland in my style. Okay. Like I just, even the painting in my house is white everywhere. Like I don't like colors mm. that much. And you're wearing a red, it's, no, quite, weird. Uh, it's quite colorful. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting that you come in monochrome, black and white. But no. you're, wearing, you're in red, you're looking very colorful. So <laughs> I don't know, how, how, how is it so that, um, that your outlook that you see that you don't like colors? How is it so? Okay, um, when I was younger, I started realizing that colors affect me. Like, mm. too much colors affect okay. my mood. Okay. Like, I could get into a room and it's painted orange and I'm feeling down. Mm. Yes. So I started realizing how white um, relates more with me. Okay. Or black. Just something very plain. plain. No dramas mm. and all of that, yeah. Mm. Quite interesting, yeah? <laughs> so let's, this one is beautiful. Let's talk about this particular painting or the, the one we just saw, there, that lady with the beads and all of that. Okay. How long did it take you to it, put together a commission to put that project? Um, it depends on the size. Okay. And how well detailed is it, it, is. it is. Like this Bob Marley painting, for instance, mm. and this one, it, it can take as much as two months. Two months? Yes. How many hours a day working for you for these two months? <laughs> Sometimes you can go 16 hours. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. 16 hours? Yes. In a day? Sometimes more. You got 24 hours in a day. Are you sure? <laughs> sometimes more. Like, so sometimes I walk all through the day. I rest around the night and then go back to work midnight. Mm. And maybe have two, three hours of sleep and start again. This seems like it's more than just a profession for you. Yes. What does art do to you as a person? Okay, um, I went into it for survival, basically. Mm. Mm. But after a while, it became my person because I am I'm more introverted. Okay. So it kind of suited me more. Yeah. Because I work from home. I don't have to see people. I don't have to go out. So it became like, like part of my life i can know? understand so yeah so much so that even if you're not making money from it you would still do it i would oh, wonderful now let's talk about the making money part art <laughs> differs and all of that you know um, the appreciation of art we know that is not it differs in different places yeah let's I, I i want to hear your own take on the appreciation of art in nigeria, nigeria. as it is 
Okay, before I started art, mm -hmm. I used to think that it's not lucrative. Okay. I used to think that who in Nigeria would pay a certain amount for, you know, just something on paper or whatever. Yeah. But when I started, I realized that there are quite a number of people who just want to see themselves repainted mm. or redrawn or mm. something. I myself, I'm not fascinated. By seeing yourself. By yeah. seeing myself. I'm, so I, in five I mean, years, I've never drawn myself. Look, man, we'll pick up here. I, I saw, I, I, there's this particular person I know, and they wake up, there's one big one here. Yeah. Themselves. They turn here, another big one. I, 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 if I see myself, I wake up and see myself in the morning, I think I would, I would go back, I would pass out, like I know. I know so funny for like different that, strokes or different I've folks. I've done about 14, 16 art for a single person. Oh, wow. Yes, so I know people that want to see themselves everywhere. But I'm not fascinated by that. I don't mm. have a single portrait of myself in the house or mm. anything. So, um, but art is actually lucrative in Nigeria. Mm. And luckily for us, we have social media now. We don't have to, they don't, they don't have to pass through your shop or something to see you. Mm. They can just see you online. Mm. So you can actually sell across um, um, the world mm. just by doing mm. your stuff in your studio. Now, something I have seen is that a lot of um, artists who yeah. draw tend to gravitate towards graphic design, you know, on Ooh. the computer. Yes, I know, like, so they go into graphic design. I know, I, I know. Artists who draw. Yeah, who draw, yeah. You see some, I, I, so I've had a lot of them maybe in secondary school when they were growing up and they actually okay. were quite good, but then they, they gravitated towards graphics, you know, making graphics because, you know, like you said, some people had that mentality that it was not, it was not lucrative enough and yeah. they just try into graphics and all that. Have you, have you ever tried anything graphic design? Have you ever no. meddled into it? Would you ever? No. You don't think so? So no. it's always the going to be... The only other thing I would try mm. is um, painting okay. with colors. I would try to overcome that fear be a of colors. I would, I would love to have <laughs> you at that time when you overcome it. And maybe tell us your story then. Okay. Because that would be something to listen to. Well, meanwhile, you, you're, good in color. you're looking good in colors. So maybe... <laughs>